Good morning, YouTube, and today we are here at Alamo City Harley-Davidson here in the beautiful San Antonio, Texas, and today we're going to be riding the 28 Softtail Street Bob. Now, I'm very excited to ride this bike because if you're a fan of the channel, you know that I have the 2017 Street Bob when it was still a Dyna. Uh, this bike has been completely redesigned. It's now featuring the Milwaukee 8 107, uh, putting out 110 foot pounds of torque. It also features the completely redesigned Softtail frame, the new slimmer 3.5 gallon tank, uh, 100 uh, tires in the front, 150 in the rear, new digital digital mounted gauge and it's also got uh, these those new not forward controls but not mid controls uh, foot controls here so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hop on this bike and we'll see um, how I like it so uh, right off the bat I did notice that uh, the the new 2018s do not have any center console they don't have any uh, keys to turn on and off you simply have a, uh, a key fob over here key fob right there and then to turn the bike on you just switch it to on. So let's go ahead and uh, get this bike started up. <laughs> so right off the bat, if you've never ridden a uh, Milwaukee 8 and you're used to the old 103s, these bikes feel completely different. They don't have that standard Harley shake. And also, let me uh, let me get the bike in a neutral. So the bike is in neutral. So uh, you know about the first gear kick. Well, this one, ha it makes a noise, but the bike doesn't really move. Well, that one time it didn't even make a noise. So <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, take off here. So I will say that this bike just feels 110% different. But first off, a little bit about myself, uh, in case this is the first video you're watching on the channel. My name is Justin and I run the channel here called Bike and Bird. Uh, I've been riding my entire life pretty much since I could walk. That was mostly uh, dirt bikes and stuff like that. So I've only had officially eight years of street experience, but I've ridden everything from 1000cc sport bikes to uh, uh, Harleys, touring bikes, things like that. Uh, currently I own a 2017 Street Bob, like I mentioned earlier, and I also have a 2014 Iron 883. So right off the bat, I can tell this bike is just uh, so different, so, so different from the uh, the 2017s. The motor feels completely different. The steering feels completely different. Uh, the way that the, the seat sits, completely different. Everything about this bike is just completely different. I do notice that uh, with these bars, the steering is a lot more aggressive. Oh, the shifting is super smooth. <laughs> I also want to point out that uh, even though this this uh, ride is being produced in partnership with Alamo City Harley-Davidson, it is in my contract that I am able to give my complete unbiased review, and I do not have to give this bike a good review. I will point out the cons, I will point out the pros, uh, but they're all my personal opinions, so just take them with a little grain of salt, and you can uh, kind of form your own opinion over that. All right, so uh, on to the bike. So far, just smooth. If I had to describe it in one word, it would be smooth. Um, the handlebars are very comfortable. They are not angled back as bad as some of the other bikes, like the uh, the Iron 1200. The uh, controls are a little off, but that's that's just needs some adjustment. Uh, I do like the new levers. The levers are definitely different. They're more uh, squared off. So um, let's just go ahead and hop on the interstate here and see how it does. My God! <laughs> Holy crap! This 107 is stupid. <laughs> so my first thought was, uh, aside from "Holy crap," was the uh, the seat, man. Even though the the seat is too low profile, even though it does have that little angle at the back, um, it almost threw me off the back of the bike. Now Harley, of course, is not known for their extraordinary seats, but uh, yeah, I was I was hanging on for dear life there. So right off the bat, I do notice that the uh, the wind is a bit excessive, but on the 2017s, it was worse. I would say it's better on the 2018s than it was on the 2017s. It's still not ideal. You definitely still feel a lot of wind, but I feel like you're sitting more in the bike as opposed to on the bike like you were on the 2017s. Man, that torque is awesome. So this, this bike, like I mentioned earlier, does have the uh, Milwaukee 8 107. It's one of the only soft tails that you cannot get the 114 in. Uh, right now, as of recording this video, I believe these bikes are retailing for 14.4 for the Vivid Black and then go up from there. So I will say I really like the, uh, the digital speedometer. The whole digital gauge is up front. I really like that. Also, my brights are on. 
So I've been on the highway for a few miles and as you can probably hear, I'm getting I'm getting beat around pretty bad. But like I said, with this bike being, you know, taller bars and things like that, there's nothing to protect you from the wind. This bike is not meant to protect you from the wind without, you know, additional accessories like a windshield or a fairing, stuff like that. So I'm not surprised I'm getting beat around. Oh, that's pretty cool. I noticed that the uh, the gear indicator is here on the top right of the gauges. It's not a separate screen like it was on the uh, the 2017s. It's very easy to read too. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but uh, even in well, pretty much direct sunlight, I can still see everything on the uh, on the gauge very well. Man, the torque on this bike is dumb. 110 foot pounds with the 107. I mean, I'm in sixth gear and I can just, I mean, just take off. All right, so I'm getting off the interstate here. My uh, overall thoughts on the, uh, the interstate ride is definitely windy. Uh, I would not want to do extremely long trips on this bike without some sort of uh, windshield or something like that. But uh, I mean, this bike is not really made for the longer trips, so it's understandable. Oh man, those downshifts were super smooth. Oh man. Harley did such a great job on this new motor. Uh, brakes are, are standard. I mean, they're nothing to, to write home about, I would say, but yeah, they're, they're solid. All right, so now we're off the interstate. We're gonna go hit a, a little back road here, and then we're gonna hop onto a, like a back road highway just to kind of get a couple different styles of riding in. Man, the shifts on this bike are just smooth. At first, I really did not like the uh, the, the more forward uh, foot controls, but they're really growing on me. They're very comfortable. Uh, the seat, aside from it, you know, not holding my butt in when I took off, uh, is actually a lot more comfortable than the, the old ones. A lot more comfortable than the 2017s. Uh, let's see, weight. Uh, this bike weighs in at over 600 pounds. I'll put the exact weight here on the screen. But I mean, with these tall bars and the low center of gravity, you can really just throw this bike around. Oh yeah, super smooth. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, all right, so what else here? Let's go through the uh, the gauges. Uh, you've got your range, your clock, RPMs. Uh, the gear indicator stays on all the time, it looks like. Uh, your odometer, your trip A, trip B, and then back to the range. So, not a ton of not a ton of features, but having the range and it does have a fuel gauge. That's something that the 2017 does not have. Over on the left hand side, you do have a fuel gauge. Well, I take that back. The 2017 does have it, but it's on the tank. It's not on the gauges. But other than that, I mean, your hand controls are pretty much the same: blinker left, blinker right, hazard start, on off. All right, so this is a really bumpy road that we're on right now. The bike is handling it very well. It's absorbing a lot of the shock. I've taken my personal bike on this road many a time, so I know what it feels like on my bike, and this is handling the stuff uh, a lot better. It's a lot smoother to ride. Ooh, that's a big pothole. Well, you, you just saw it's very, very nimble. It flicks around very easily. Yeah, this bike handles very well. I was honestly not expecting to like this bike this much. I'm not a huge fan of the way it looks, especially with the smaller tank. Uh, it's one reason why I went with the 2017 Dyna when uh, it was out is I really liked having that larger fuel capacity for the longer rides. But with the Milwaukee 8 having better gas mileage, you're not you're not sacrificing the range that much. I actually have a buddy of mine that's in the market for one of these right now, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this thing raving reviews. It's it definitely can can do what he would use it for. Handled that railroad crossing very well. All right, so now we're on this uh, back road highway here. A little bit faster speeds, but uh, it's still very comfortable. The bars, I, I really don't hate. I, I thought I was gonna dislike them a lot more than I, I do. 
I, I personally am a fan of T-bars, so I'm more of a, a straight, a high and straight kind of guy. But I could live with these bars, especially if I was able to push them a little bit forward. Which brings me to my next point is uh, size. Now, a lot of people, they're, they're worried about, uh, oh, I'm X tall, X heavy. Will I fit on this bike? To give you some perspective, I am 6'2", about 235, 240 pounds, somewhere around there. And um, I feel on this bike quite well. Like I said, I would like to push the bars a little bit further forward uh, just to kind of get my arms a little bit more stretched out. But I've got very long arms. I don't have that long of legs though. And I'm fit, I'm sitting pretty comfortable. So if you've got really long legs, you might be a tad bit cramped on this bike. But I, I believe, don't, don't quote me on this, but I believe that you can put forward controls on this bike, which would put your feet out to about right there, maybe a little bit less but uh give you a little bit more stretch or uh what i like to do is i like to keep the mid controls and then put a a highway bar or a, a crash bar up front so my controls will stay here but i'll also have the option to put my legs out like so but uh, like i said i could definitely live with these bars just with a little bit of adjustment so going back to the tank, that's one thing that they redesigned on these new soft tails is they, they lowered this to a 3.6 gallon tank. But uh, with a 47 mile per gallon uh, ratio, you can still easily get over 150 miles out of this tank, which of course is not competing with tour, touring bikes or anything like that, but uh, it definitely is better than the, uh, the Sportsters. So that was uh, that was a little strange. I was going to a downshift, and uh, I, I, the the shifting was so smooth. I was having a hard time figuring out what gear I was in. I'm sure that comes with just experience with the bike. Man, the shifting is just so smooth. God, and the torque is everywhere. I was in fifth gear. So the bike does have a little bit more of a of a grumble to it than the, uh, the 2017s did. Uh, that was one of my big complaints when I bought my bike is that uh, the exhaust was super quiet. This one's definitely not loud, but you're not gonna buy any bike on the, the new market that has a loud exhaust. Uh, companies are just too restricted by emissions and things like that to really put a, a nice loud exhaust on a bike. But this one is loud enough to where, I mean, I could live with it for a while. Downshifting is nice, downshifting is super smooth. Front brakes definitely work. Okay, so yeah, that was a lot easier to get into first gear than it was last time. I think I was just on a, a weird incline or something like that. So now we're getting into more of a, an urban environment, a little bit more of a, a, a city environment. So we're going to test out, see how it works. Uh, stoplight to stoplight, sitting in traffic, things like that. Uh, speaking of sitting in traffic, one thing I do want to point out is we've been riding this bike for about 20 miles now and um, I, don't, I really don't feel any heat coming off of the motor. Definitely, definitely cooler than the 103s. And that was one thing they, uh, they prided themselves on. They're, they're partially liquid-cooled motors, so they stay uh, a lot cooler than the older twin cams do. So let's talk about uh, upgrades. Of course, with the, the world of Harley, the upgrades are... I mean, the sky is really the limit. There, you can pretty much do anything. But the 2018 model is a little bit different because they went through a very big redesign, so a lot of the older parts will not fit on this bike. But uh, as time goes on, more and more parts are getting uh, put out for this bike. Uh, my top three uh, would be a seat, which is, is no surprise. Harley is not known for, for making great seats. But I will say, like I mentioned earlier, this one is better than the uh, the previous stock seats that they had on the Street Bobs. Um, but I would still, it would still probably be my number one. After that would probably be an exhaust uh, purely for the uh, the sound. Uh, it definitely does not need the performance <laughs> upgrades. Uh, this bike is is very quick uh, in comparison. I mean, it's you know not sport bike quick, of course, but uh, in comparison to the other older Harleys, this is definitely a, a fast bike. Next up on my list, my, my running up my top three would probably be new bars. Um, but like I said, bars are going to be 110% personal preference. There is nothing wrong with these bars by any means. I would just prefer a uh, a tall straight bar. 
but with them including the uh, these 10 inch mini apes from the factory you're you're not um, you're not restricted to having to swap out the the cables and the uh, the wiring and stuff like that so uh, putting on some t bars or even like a, a straight tracker bar would be extremely easy And I am just blown away by how smooth this bike just does everything. How smooth it shifts, how smooth it decelerates, how smooth it rides, how smooth it accelerates. Everything on this bike is just smooth. It really, it, people are, are notorious for saying this on the Milwaukee 8s, is that it does not feel like you would expect a Harley to feel, which for some people they might dislike, but uh, I would say for most people they would say that it was a, a plus, that it's a positive. Also, one thing that I just noticed is that with this smaller tank, you're really able to, to suck your legs into the bike and really decrease your profile. Uh, that'd be really good for, for hitting some twisties and things like that. And so through that neighborhood, it just felt super smooth. I had no complaints whatsoever. Now let's talk a little bit about um, who this bike is for. So with a 14.4 price tag, it's definitely on the lower end of the newer Harleys. I would say that this would be a great bike for someone who wants a little bit more range in the Sportster, a little bit more comfort from the Sportster, but doesn't want to pay the, the $20,000 price tags of uh, some of the bigger soft tails. Would it be a good beginner bike? Ah, yes and no. I kind of have the same answer to pretty much any bike. And that's uh, if, if you're a, a, a beginner, you can only get into so much trouble as you allow yourself. You have to respect the bike. You have to respect the power of the bike. And that goes for anything. Yes, of course, you're going to be able to get yourself into a lot more trouble with a, a you know, 1400cc Hayabusa than you are on a, a, I don't know, a Sports Rate A3. But I don't believe that this power on these bikes is so ridiculously powerful that you can get yourself into too much trouble. Uh, I feel like... Uh, if you're kind of on the fence between a Sportster or a Softail, I would say go Softail personally just because I feel like you would end up being overall happier. Now, uh, if if the price tag just isn't there, the Iron 1200 is a great bike. The Iron 83 is a great bike to start off with. Also, if you use uh, Harley's new buyback pro program, anything that you spend on the bike, uh, if you trade in after a year, gets directly applied to uh, a new bike. So if you go in and buy, say for example, an Iron 1200 for 10 grand, when you come back that a year later, they're going to give you 10 grand on your your trade in they're not going to give you the the blue book value or anything like that so that's a great option a great opportunity for you to take advantage of if you kind of are on the fence uh but just can't justify the the 30 extra cost between the street bob and the iron all right guys we're wrapping up the test right here uh one last thing i wanted to point out is that this bike the 2018s are throttled by wire so there are no cables uh, coming from the throttle it's all controlled electronically through a switch that's actually inside the handlebar um, I honestly I couldn't tell the difference I I did not know that that was one thing that's always been in my mind is uh, I like the throttle cables I like the throttle cables I don't like throttle by wire but now that I've ridden a bike that I did not realize was throttle by wire until after I'm done riding it I'm convinced that it's it's the way of the future. The the big benefit of that is that if you buy a tuner such as the the Vance and Hines Fuel Pack Three, you can control your throttle sensitivity uh, with that tuner from the app on your phone. So you don't have to buy any adapters or change out your throttle tube or anything like that. Everything is controlled directly through the electronics here. All right, guys. So um, basically, my my overall to wrap this up, this bike is is great. I I really had my doubts when I first started off, just because I'm not a huge fan of the looks but this is an awesome bike if you like the way it looks then by all means go test ride one and uh, if you like it buy it i really have no reservations about this bike also if you're in the uh, san antonio area and you end up purchasing a bike up here at cowboys alamo city harley davidson let them know that bike and bird sent you and they will uh they'll hook you up they'll they'll take care of you uh very good sales staff here uh very friendly overall staff just everyone there is nice and they they want to put you on a bike that you will love. They're not going to try to upsell you or press you into something that you don't want or you don't need. Uh, they're going to. Their their real main focus is getting.
getting something that you want. And uh, they'll bend over backwards to, to get that taken care of for you. So guys, that's going to wrap up the review. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, that uh, you want to ask about this bike, please go ahead and leave it down in the comment section below and I'll answer it as soon as I possibly can. Also, if you're new to the channel, I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'll be doing reviews on all the bikes that you see here as well as the 2019s when they are released. So hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on, make sure you don't miss a video. Uh, we've got group rides going on, we got bike builds, ton of stuff, not just uh, um, uh, test rides a bike. So uh, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.